Hello everyone, Phoenix Knight here. Welcome to the channel, and welcome to a new playthrough on the channel. Yes, as you can probably hear, I'm still a little bit plugged up, and be after I get through this first shot, I'm actually going to go take some Claritin, because I'm thinking it's allergies at this point rather than another cold. Anyway, after we managed to assassinate Hitler and his trusted lieutenant in Black Orchestra last week, we're going to pay a brief visit to the Cthulhu Mythos today. We're going to play Elder Sign from Fantasy Flight Studios. In this game, we take on the role of investigators who are trying to defeat whichever ancient one we're taking on via special dice. I'm also currently in, I'm also currently involved in a playthrough of Eldritch Horror with Jester, Rough Swordsman Wargamer, and Patrick from Patrick's Tactics and Tutorials. The reason I mentioned that is because we're going to see a lot of familiar faces from that playthrough. Without any further ado, let's go meet today's cast of characters. First up we have our Ancient One, Shude Mel. You can see we have 10 Doom, Dooms 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 9 add additional monsters to the board. We need 12 Elder Signs to seal him away. His attack goal is 3 Terror, but we'll come to that later. So Shude Mel's special ability is World Cracking. When an investigator fails an adventure, Discard that adventure or other world adventure, as well as any monsters on that card, and don't replace it. If there are no more adventures or other world look cards in play, the game ends and the investigators lose. Then the attack. When Shede Mel attacks, place all ad awakens, place all adventure and other world cards in the play area beneath this card. When Shede Mel attacks, discard one card from beneath this card. If there is no card to discard, the game ends and the investigators lose. So this could end up being a very short video, or potentially a, well, it's probably not going to be too long a video, but, and the length might give the, might give the result away, but that's just the chance you take in this game. Also, this is the ancient one we're taking on in that Elder Horror playthrough, and it's going to be a fairly challenging one here. Next up, let's go through the entrance. I realize I'm doing this slightly out of order from how I normally do my Elder Sign videos, but some of it's kind of for space constraints as well. But an option is to pass the turn at the entrance, and here's what we can gain in the museum. You can get first aid, choosing a treatment from the list below. Heal either a sanity or stamina for free. Pay two trophies to regain either, or four to regain all. Search the lost and found, roll a green die, and consult the chart. On any re research result, you lose, lose either sanity or stamina. On a lore, gain a clue token. Peril, gain a common item. Terror, gain a spell. Or you can buy a souvenir. One trophy gets you a clue. Two for a common item. Three for a unique item. Four gets you a spell. Five for an ally. And ten for an elder sign. Which we've used the ability to buy elder signs quite effectively in the past, but I don't know how much of that we're going to be doing in this playthrough. Anyway, now that we're through the entrance, let's go meet the actual investigators. Patrick in that playthrough is playing Preston Fairmont, the millionaire. Four health, or four sanity, six stamina. I'll put health and sanity, I'll put, I'll put, I'll put health and sanity on as I take it. Because that's how I usually do it in this game. You can see Preston's artwork here. I'm actually going to use the minis from the card game to move over. Preston's the only investigator where the artwork's the same on both games. And I use the card game, uh, I use the card game minis because they actually serve as good activation tokens. Col colorful when they've gone, or when they haven't gone yet. Black and white when they have. So I'll move that over to the entrance. And then we'll take a look at Preston. So just like an Eldritch Horror, Preston gets re retail therapy here as well. Once per turn, when Preston gains a common or unique item, he may regain one sanity or one stamina. Starts off with a clue and two common items. The clues, as you recall, can be used to reroll any number of dice. So for the common items, first up Preston has... A cross before rolling, discard to become blessed. And... An ancient tome to give him the yellow, plus the yellow die. I do have some, so I do have a spin down counter here for Preston and I'll have one for each character. That's only so I can tell at a glance how many trophies each character has. So I know what I have available to me at the entrance. That's all that's going to represent. That's not anything special here. That will do it for Preston. Now let's go meet Ruff's investigator. 
Ruff in that playthrough is playing Dexter Drake, the Magician. Here he's got five sanity, five stamina. There's Dexter's mini card. When, he's, when he hasn't gone, and when he has, he'll move over to the entrance as well. Magical Gift is Dexter's special ability. Each time Dexter gains one or more spells after setup, he gains an additional spell. He starts off with a unique and two spells, so his unique item. Dragon's Eye, before moving, discard to discard one adventure card, along with all monsters on it, replacing it with a new adventure card. This card cannot affect other world cards. And then for his spells... Flesh Ward, which lets us lock one die, and... Bless. Discard to choose one investigator to become blessed. So we can definitely get blessings right off the bat. Which, against should a Mel, could be a good thing, especially when the, the adventures are not going to replace themselves. But that will do it for Dexter. Next up, we'll have the investigator I'm playing. I'm playing Mandy Thompson, the researcher. Five of each, just like Dexter. Here's her mini card when she hasn't gone yet. And when she has. So we'll move Mandy over to the entrance. Her special ability is research. Once per day, after any player has rolled dice, Mandy may re-roll two dice before determining if the active player was able to complete a task. She starts off with a common item and a clue. So her common item is the Roadster. Discard this card at the end of your resolution phase to skip your clock phase and take another turn. So if we need to keep things moving, we can use that, potentially. And then again, she's got a clue. Her spin down is present, and then that will do it for Mandy. Last up, we have the Investigator Jester's playing. Jester is playing Tony Morgan, the Bounty Hunter. Four Sanity, six Stamina. Here's his mini card. Tony, when he hasn't gone, and when he has, we'll move that over to the entrance as well. His special ability always gets his man. When attempting an adventure with a monster, Tony gains the red die for free, even if it's locked. Two common items to start the game with, he finds. The knife to give him the yellow die, and... Bullwhip to give him another yellow, to give him the yellow die a second time. Obviously, you can only gain it once per adventure, but he's got two ways to gain it now. So that's our cast of investigators. Now let's move over to the museum and set up our starting adventures. It would be just our luck against Shitty Mel to end up with six adventures that we have a very difficult time completing. But let's see what we've got for, for our starting adventure. So first up we have... Vision of Demise. After successful... For trophy value of two. After successfully resolving this adventure, look at the top three cards of the Mythos deck. Discard one and return the other two to the top of the deck in any order. Two scrolls and then two terror. Succeeding gets you an Elder Sign and a spell. Failing loses you a, sta a Sanity. That might be a good one potentially for Dexter to go after. But we'll see about that. Next adventure up. Up on the roof. I, for two trophy values. On an entry, if there's no monster on this adventure... Place one on the monster task below, whatever the monster gives, and then terror, peril, and lore in one shot. Succeeding gets you a spell, a retreat doomed by one, an elder sign, and add a monster. Failing loses you a sanity and a stamina. Failing, remember, against Shudy Mel also discards the adventure without replacing it, so we do need to be careful of that. Next up... Just sign here. For the trophy value of two, you need a lore, a peril, and three research. Succeeding puts an otherworld adventure out, a spell, and I believe curses you. Let me double check that symbol. Ah, uh, yes. Succeeding would get you cursed, but fortunately we've got two investigators who... Can get who can either get blessed or bless somebody. So it may be a good idea to send somebody in there just so the curse isn't too perilous. Then next up, 
the security office for a trophy value of one. The bigger problem is that it's an ordered task. So we need two research, then three, then six. Succeeding gets you an ally, failing loses two sanity. Next up. Oh joy, break on through for tr trophy value of two and we're locking the green die right off the bat. Lore and loses sanity, three research and another lore. Succeeding gets an, gets an other world adventure and a unique item. Failing loses a sanity and a stamina. I'll put a green die there. And then our last adventure. Too quiet. At midnight, add a doom token to the doom track and a monster appears. Succeeding, or we need a lore and a terror and then two terror. Succeeding gets you an elder sign and a unique item. Failing advances doom by one and loses a stamina. Oh joy. Well, the starting adventures aren't too terribly bad, but we definitely have a pressing problem in the green die being locked right off the bat. Fortunately, well, it's a good news, bad news situation in terms of we're going to get the green die back after we go attempt that adventure. Whether we get to replace it or not depends on if we succeed. But I think that's everything set up for this playthrough. And like I mentioned at the... St well, actually, one more thing we'll need to do is we need to start Mythos card. So we'll get our first Mythos card. The stars align. Oh, joy. Add one Doom token to the Doom track to bring sickness. All adventure cards have additional have one additional health penalty today. So we'll put a Doom with very small fingers on the Doom track. So we're already at one of ten Doom. But remember, against Shitty Mel, that's not the only way we can lose the game. So that's everything set up to start this game. So let's get into it. And like I said at the top, we might, the length might end up giving away the result, but that's just the chance you take. So anyway, we're all set to get into this playthrough. Let's see where Preston's going on his first turn. Our first immediate problem, and probably the most obvious one to go after, is the locked green die down here on Break on Through. So I'm going to bring Preston down to it, and then we'll zoom in on Preston to see what we can do with that. We'll start off by discarding the cross to become blessed. So we'll take a look at the blessing here. So add the white die to your dice pool at the start of each adventure. Discard this card if you fail an adventure, if you become cursed, or when the Ancient One awakens. So we'll bring that over to Preston, which will give him the white die. To replace, to replace the green die that we've got locked on there right now. What did I do with my... There's my dice cup. So just to refresh our memory, we need a lore and lose a sanity. Then we need three research and a lore. So let's see what happens. <sighs> I don't want to spend the clue right away. I mean, I could now, but no, I think we'll just discard the white die and we'll focus the three research on Preston. And I'll go ahead and roll the rest of these. So basically I need to roll one lore, at least one lore twice. Okay, there's the lore, so I'll take the three that I focused on Preston earlier. And then we'll see if we can roll one more look. We can. So Preston will have to lose a sanity, but he'll immediately get that back from retail therapy as the unique item gives him. Uh, the Burnick Carving. Gain this die even if it's locked. The red die. That'll bring him up to a trophy value of two. The green die is, un is now unlocked. We'll also get an Otherworld Adventure in a second. So that'll go to Preston. We'll move him up to the entrance. Bring the Dice Tower out of shop. I don't want to go far with it. Our Replacement Adventure first, we find. Tempest in a Teapot. 
Actually, let's take a quick look at the flavor text on Breakout 3 because that's how I usually do it. With a shriek, the very fabric of reality came apart in my hands. Delightful. Alright, Tempest in a Teapot. With a trophy value of one, another ordered task. For research, then a terror, then a peril and a lore. Succeeding gets you a clue, a unique item, and an elder sign. Failing loses a health, advances doom by one, and a loses sanity. Remember, that would be an additional health because of the Mythos card we have today. With that, the clock phase advances to 3 o'clock, and we'll move back up top for Dexter. Looking at the adventures right now, I could use the Dragon's Eye, the Dragon's Eye right now, if there's anything particularly dangerous that I want to get rid of, and I think there is, because that adding a Doom Token and a monster appears is going to make these adventures become unclearable very quickly. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of Too Quiet, and we'll replace that with a new adventure we will find. Something that is even worse. Recruiting aid. For two trophies, it's an ordered task. We need three research, then six, then nine. Succeeding gets you two allies. Failing loses sanity. That kind of blew up in my face. Um, then where do I want to send Dexter? Uh, this is bad. I think pretty much anywhere we send him... Oh, we need another world for Preston as well. So, Break On Through gave us an other world adventure, we find. Lost Carcosa. Three terror and five, uh, five research, and a monster can go there. A monster can also go on Tempest of a Teapot, which I forgot to mention. Succeeding gets two Elder Signs, a clue, and a spell. Failing loses you three sanity, and get discards the adventure, remember, because of Should I Mel. Let's see, so where do I want to send Dexter? Um, I think we'll send him to... I think we'll send him to just sign here. I'll plan on using his Bless next turn to get rid of the curse right away. So with that, let's move up to Dexter and see what he's doing. On this adventure, remember, we need a lore, a peril, and then three research. Let's see what Dexter does. Okay, there's the three research. Now we need lore and a peril. which we get the lore. And there's the peril. That was nice and easy. So Dexter's completed that, which gives him a trophy value of two as well. All right, we need a another other world adventure, so our next other world adventure is the Plateau of Lang. Terror effect lose one sanity. Terror effects are effects that if you roll the terror die on a, if you roll a terror die on one, face on one of your dice and you aren't able to complete a task, you have the terror effect happen, and then you discard a die. So anyway, we need a lore and a terror, but a monster can go there. Then we need Terror, Peril, Terror. Succeeding, it retreats Doom by one, puts an, adds an Elder Sign, and gives you two clues. Failing loses you two health, but that would be three because of the penalty for the Mythos card today. Uh, let's see what else we get. We get two spells for Dexter. Because he gets one from the adventure and one because he's Dexter. So first spell up. Find a monster. After rolling, discard to defeat a monster. 
and call friend which locks another die. Unfortunately, that's where the good news ends because Dexter is also cursed, but I was planning for this. So this will work a little bit differently. So we'll add the black die to your dice pool at the start of each adventure. Discard this card if you successfully resolve an adventure, if you become blessed, or when the Ancient One awakens. The way the black die works is it's functionally got the same dice as a, as a green die, but unlike the white die being an additional die, it will actually eat a matching result. So we do need to be careful of that. That goes to Dexter. Dexter moves up to the entrance and flips over. And our replacement adventure... The Storage Closet. Another ordered task. We'll go through the, the uh, flavor text on just sign here in a second. Trophy value of two. Three research and a monster can go there. Then three research again and two lore. Succeeding gets you a clue, another world adventure, and a unique item. Failing advances doomed by one and loses a sanity. So the flavor text on just sign here. You'll get everything that's coming to you, he told me. I understood. Hopefully he did. Hopefully under hopefully Dexter understands the bargain he just made. But that will do it for Dexter's turn. I'll bring the dice tower out of shot by the time we move back up top. Clock phase first. So we go to 6 o'clock to Mandy. Now we have an even more dangerous situation on the board because we have four ordered tasks and I think now we need to clear one of them. So I think I'll bring Mandy down to Tempest in a teapot since I figured that's probably the easiest one she can go for right now. She's not She's actually not particularly well equipped. I may end up leaning on that clue to try to get through this one, but let's zoom down to Mandy and see what she's doing. We need four research to start on this adventure, and because it's an ordered task, we need to complete them from top to bottom. We need to complete the task from top to bottom. Okay, there's our four. I don't like that it took me... Well, there was no way I could avoid that taking two dice. I've also got Mandy's research if I need it, and I very well might. Um, I think I'll spend the clue here. I'm not going to go too far with that, though, because... Because I'm hoping to get it back on this adventure. We had one fall out, but I'll take a terror result. So now I've got her research that I can lean on if I need it. Which I will use because I did roll a peril there, but I need lore. Which I don't get, so I'll discard that, focus the peril on Mandy, and now this has to be a lore. Which it is not. That's unfortunate. So, all of these go away. Tempest in a teapot will actually get discarded after we lose two health. A sanity. I'm gonna need the doom. I reached for the, I reached for the doom, but I said sanity. So, I'll just show off all the tokens that Mandy is going to end up with. So there's the two health, one for the re the penalty, one because the Mythos card said all adventures had an additional health penalty. So two health, sanity, and another doom goes up. Mandy moves to the entrance, and the Tempest in a Teapot is discarded, and we don't replace it. So right now we've got some room to play with, but we don't have a lot of breathing room left. Oh, we need a replacement adventure for... Oh, no. Recruiting aid just fell off. Never mind, because I had the dice tower that was moving in there. So, yeah. That's one adventure gone, seven to go. With that, the clock phase... We'll move, come on, 
9 o'clock to Tony and let's move back up top. Tony is going to move down to up on the roof. Mostly because there's going to be a monster there, but that'll give him the red die for free. There's going to be a monster there by the time I start it, but he's going to get the red die for free. So let's zoom in on Tony and see how he handle, how he gets on with that adventure. I've got the monster bag off shot, so let's go ahead and pull that out. We have, oh joy, we have the Hound of Tindalos, I believe is what this is, right? Yes. Trophy value of two, we'll go through the flavor text if we're able to claim it as a trophy. All right, the, it locks the yellow die, which is a problem because I was planning on using that. Advance the clock and a lore to defeat it. We got a lot of symbols on this adventure. But we do at least get... So we put the yellow die there. It does at least give us the red die for free. So we'll, we'll probably need that to clear this one. And I got to remember how at midnight during an adventure works. I think you finish the turn and then you go into the mythos phase. Um, do do do. Midnight strikes after the player's current clock phase ends. So, right. Okay. Go ahead and see how we're getting on with this adventure. Okay, do we have the Terror, Lore, and Peril? We do. So I'll take that down there. And now I just need a lore in four dice. Oop. And I think that one fell out. Okay, so we'll discard one. You've got to be kidding me, Tony. Okay, a wild symbol will work which will advance the clock to midnight to defeat the Hound of Tindalos. So Tony will claim that as a trophy value of two. Within the strange mist, a horrid shape moved in the corner. So that is a trophy value of two for Tony, plus the trophy value on the Adventures Another Two, which is four. So Tony gains a spell, which he's not that good at spell things, he will find. Azure Flame, which lets him lock two dice. We retreat Doom by one, but I'm not going too far with it. We gain our first Elder Sign of 12 we need. So I'll bring Tony up to a trophy value of four. Then we'll need a monster, which can go on this adventure. We'll flip everybody over because we'll be moving back up top of the Mythos phase in a, in a minute. Our next monster coming out. Bring the dice out of the way. Our next adventure coming out. Something is broken free. Terror, you immediately fail this adventure. Need a peril, but a monster can go there to terror. On a success, you spawn a monster, gain a clue, Gain a spell and a unique item. Failing loses a health. Then we need a monster, but we've got several places that we can go with. That'll bring the dice tower out of shot because the storage closet is another place where I can go. Actually, we'll look at the flavor text. I had thought to gain a moment's respite by ducking outside. Yeah, that didn't work, and we kind of sent Tony into that. Anyway, clock phase will bring us to 3 o'clock. But more importantly, we do have Midnight, so let's move back up top for kind of a mix of finishing Tony's adventure and the Mythos phase.
We still need to spawn an adventure, or an adventure, a monster from finishing up on the roof for Tony. So let's see what monster we pull out here. We find, oh no, this is bad. A hunting horror, I believe this is. Lock a green die. You need a terror and lose two sanity or two health. We'll go through the flavor text on it. Yep, it's a hunting horror with a trophy value of three. Where do I want to put this? I feel like it probably makes one of these other world adventures a little more accessible. Because with those, we need at least two dice previously. I think I'm going to put it over top of Lost Car... Oh, that's going to turn it into needing four Terror. That might be where Preston's headed this turn, because he's blessed, and I can get him both... I gain him both colored dice. So I think... I think that'll be the plan. Which means we like one of the green dice there. And then we need a fresh Mythos card. Which I believe the Mythos deck is right here. Alright, so our Mythos card here. <sighs> the stars align for a dark future. The stars align at one doom to the doom track. For a dark future, lock the yellow die for today. Well, about that plan to get the yellow die for Preston. Yeah, not so much. Delightful. Anyway, that was a very treacherous mythos phase. So now we're back into the investigator round. I think it's... Let me just double check. But I'm pretty sure, since we're going to hit midnight during the sequence of investigators... Yeah. Okay, so yeah, it looks like we can... So yeah, it looks like every time we hit midnight we'll be resolving a mythos. So, that kind of sets us back a little bit, but there's nothing we can do about it. So, in Preston's turn, even with the yellow die locked, getting this green die unlocked by any means necessary is too important. So we've got to bring Preston down to Lost Carcosa. With that, let's zoom in on Preston and see what he's doing this turn. I think I'm going to dump the... Burner carving to give him the red die. Because we're going to need... I figure with needing four terror, we're probably going to need at least one of those to be a wild card. So let's see what Preston... how Preston manages to get on here. Well, there's the one terror that'll at least defeat the hunting horror, even though it's going to cost Preston two sanity to do that. Or two, no, two health to do that. Never mind. I said sanity, but I reached for the right tokens. And then we've got a, now we've got a clue that we're probably going to need. Let's see what we get here. I'll keep that, but I am going to spend the clue to reroll everything else. Come on. All right, I will discard the... I'll discard this one and I'll focus the terror on Preston. I'm going to keep rolling. Unfortunately, I can't keep the second ter terror. No. Because I don't have a spell that lets me cast it on a player's turn. <sighs> Discard the three. And we had a wild card in there. This needs to be a terror and a terror or a wild card or we fail this adventure. Preston's going to take some 
serious mental owies this turn. As he's going to take three sanity, bringing him down to one. He may end up healing. Let me let that focus a little bit better. He may end up healing next turn at the entrance. So at least he gets the Hunting Horror as a trophy. As a trophy value of three. It's black, serpentine body, twitched and writhed like lightning. So that'll bring up to bring up to a trophy value of five. Also perilously, it loses him as blessed. So that discards, Preston moves up to the entrance. The adventure doesn't get replaced. Because of course it's an other world. The clock moves. I could have used Mandy's research on that. I can't believe I forgot about that. Six o'clock to Dexter. So let's move back up top and see what Dexter's doing. I sometimes tunnel vision and forget when I can use abilities on other investigators. But before we go anywhere, Dexter's going to discard Bless and get rid of his curse. Because we don't need more problems right now. And then where is Dexter going? Um, I think Dexter is going to go... Hmm, we are not in a good situation right now, are we? Um, let's go to, okay, so the black die is gone for Dexter. He won't be using that. Let's go to the storage closet with Dexter. Actually, he wants spells, doesn't he? Um, I was eyeing a vision of demise or something is broken free. Um, let's go to, let's actually send him to something is broken free. See if we can spawn a monster, maybe at the Plateau of Ling to make that a little easier for Tony. Let's move down to Dexter and see what he's doing with that. Let me just adjust this because that's crooked and kind of bothering me a little bit. Let's see what Dexter does with this something that's broken for him. Okay, we have the skull. If we roll that single terror again, we well, are immediately going to fail this adventure. If we, roll this, yeah, if we roll a single terror again, we immediately fail the adventure. Unless I have Mandy use her research, and I might. Uh, yep, she's going to use her research, see if I can roll a terror off of this. And I do not, so Dexter will lose a san uh, sanity, a health, because the terror effect goes off because we couldn't, we rolled a terror and couldn't complete it. So that means that gets discarded and not replaced. Dexter will move back up to the entrance. And we'll go nine o'clock. Dice Tower will come out of shot as we move back up top to Mandy. Well, the one silver lining of not having, not replacing these adventures in the middle is it's at least going to make the dice tower a little bit easier to spot or to place in shot. So we'll bring Mandy down to the storage closet. Hopefully she can clear that on four green dice. And then speaking of Mandy, let's zoom in with, again, with the dice tower, newly easy to place. We need three research here. That'll work. Now we need it again. Nicely done. Now if we can roll that again, I'll be really happy with the progress of this adventure. Two more. <sighs> I 
Now that I need the lore, it's nowhere to be found. Discard the one and roll with the other three dice. Discard the peril. Wow. As soon as I need lore, it just disappears on me. So, we advance Doom by one, which is going to spawn a monster. This is going to end up discarded without a replacement. Then we get a monster out. Because we covered up a monster icon on Should Amel's Doom Track. We've got to put this over the plateau of Lang. Hope to I hope to God it's an easy one. So of course we draw an absolute beast of a monster because of course we do. This is a vampire with a trophy value of two. Need a terror, a lore, and then one of either, and that's got to go over the plateau of Lang. You know, I wanted to make that adventure easier, not harder. Mandy goes back to the entrance. Well, we're, right, we're gaining places to put the dice tower down, but we're losing our adventures. Anyway, we go to midnight, and now we're going back up top for the mythos phase. Alright, new Mythos fate, new Mythos card. A heavy burden. Uh, either add one Doom token to the Doom track, or one investigator with four or more sanity must lose three. Amid the stillness, there is no lingering effect for today. Thank the good gods above. Um, either one investigator with four or more sanity must lose three. Mmm... I think we'll put a Doom Token up. We're not that far on the Doom track, but we we have bigger problems right now than should a Mel waking up on us. So, Tony. Where are we sending Tony? As tempting as it will be to send him down to the Plateau of Ling, I think that's better Dexter territory, because he's got... He's got Bind Monster that'll let him defeat that vampire. So, I think... Oh, we've got big problems right now, because we've got... Because right now we've got two ordered tasks out that need a lot of research, a vision of demise that requires a lot of symbols, and the Plateau of Ling, which is a giant disaster right now. So I think we'll bring Tony down to the security office. And then we'll zoom in on Tony and see how he gets on with that one. I'm actually going to toss the knife in as well so I can give him the yellow die. We've got two ways to get those, so I might as well use one of them, because I figure we're going to need all the dice we can find on this adventure. Alright, there's a, a quasi... Well, yeah, there's a quasi two, but that's actually a three. It'll still work for us. Hopefully we can find another three researched in this roll. I don't like getting it on two dice, but I've got to take it. And we need six. Which in four dice should be theoretically easy enough to do. Of course not. So we'll focus the three on Tony. And we'll get it. Thank... Okay, that worked out. So we'll get an ally for Tony. Tony will find... Jeremiah Kirby. After you roll dice, place one sanity token on Jeremiah Kirby to change one die showing a lore result to a result of your choice. Discard this card when there are three tokens on it. <coughs> Excuse me. 
then the security office flavor text. The guard listened and took careful notes, uh, perhaps to help me or perhaps to condemn me. Well, the trophy value of one was to bring Tony up to five. And then since this is, well, he'll flip over, everybody else will flip as well to their having, having gone yet side. <coughs> and hey, look at that. We actually get to replace an adventure this time. So our replacement adventure, was there anything else? Nope, that was it for rewards. So now we find the hedge maze for two trophies. At midnight, each investigator loses one stamina. Two research and a peril, then two peril. Succeeding gets you, spawns a monster, unique item, common item, and an elder sign. Failing loses a health. All right, we might as well just leave the dice tower where it is in shot because it's, odds are it's going to be well placed for wherever we decide to go. But clock phase, three o'clock brings us back up top to Preston. Pass or fail, that hedge maze is too dangerous to leave on the board, but Preston's also at one sanity right now, so he's going to spend two trophies and pass his turn at the entrance to heal his sanity up to full. So he's going to go back up to four sanity. I've already flipped, actually I haven't flipped Preston's mini card over yet. The dice tower is blocking that, but I am flipping it there. Clock phase brings us to six o'clock to Dexter, and I think we'll bring him down to the Plateau of Lang so we can try to deal with this, at least deal with this vampire. So let's zoom in on Dexter. I might need to use research here. I'm hoping not because I need it. I'm probably going to need it when I send Mandy after the hedge maze, but let's see what Dexter does here. Um, do I just bite it here, or? <sighs> yeah, I think I'll just use research here, so I can maybe try to clear this in one shot, because he's got the, he's got the fire vampire already covered. If I can roll another terror, I'll take that. Which I cannot, so Dexter will have to lose a sanity. That will go on his card. Then I'll discard the... Hmm. Yeah, we'll discard the lore. And I'll focus the terror. But I'll also use bind monster to defeat the fire vampire. To defeat the vampire. So now I need to roll a peril and a terror. And I've got four... I've got... I've got three tries to do it. I'm trying to do first grade... Math. I forgot he's got spells too, so I can increase the odds of that. But we actually roll the, par the peril and the terror that we needed. So the spell will get discarded. So very nicely done, Dexter. We'll retreat Doom by one, which will take the one, the last Doom token off we added. Get us our second of 12 Elder Signs. This is both good and bad because we're losing another adventure to Should a Mill, and he gets two clues. Okay, and then we get flavor text on both. I'll move Dexter up to the entrance. So the flavor text on the vampire first, along with a trophy value of two. I hid behind a door, but the beast wasn't fooled. It could smell my blood. All right, so that brings Dexter up to a trophy value of seven before I bring the adventure over. Plateau of Lang. The Plateau of Lang was a cold, inhospitable place haunted by enormous spiders and a strange, misshapen people. So that will actually bring Dexter up to a trophy value of nine. Oop, as I'm putting it with Tony's stuff. Okay, let's recount that. So Dexter is actually at a trophy value of six. Tony should still be at a trophy value of five. Derp on my part. But now that we've got all that figured out, clock phase. 
Brings us to 9 o'clock. And let's move back up top and see where Mandy's going. As you can probably guess by where I've got the dice tower placed, Mandy is going down to the hedge maze. Because like I said, that is too dangerous to leave up. Whether we clear it or not. Because that midnight's going to soak us for stamina very quickly. Unfortunately, research isn't available to us, and Mandy has not done much all game. But, let's see what we can do with this adventure. Two research and a peril, and two peril are what we need. So let's see what we get. Uh, we'll take the two peril first. And then let's see what we can do with the rest of this. Roll it naturally, which is the only way we have available to us. But we get a unique item, so Mandy actually does something this game. Mandy finds... A prism of vision. After a roll, change to discard to change a die to its highest investigation result. You may use this item on any investigator's turn. We get a common item as well. We find... An 18 Derringer, which gives her the yellow die. Our third of 12 Elder Signs. And we get a monster, which can go... We we'll need a monster, which can go on the adventure coming in. Mandy's on the board with two, two trophies, we find. Administration Office. Trophy value of one. I'll go through the flavor text on Hedge Maze in a minute. Lore and nine. And nine investigation. Passing gets you two clues. Looks like failing loses you a sanity and disc makes you discard a clue. So the flavor text on the Hedge Maze. I know the font here is terrible to read. I have walked this maze dozens of times. I could find my way blindfolded. How could I have possibly gotten so lost? Delightful. Okay, so I think what we're going to do here is I'm actually going to discard the Roadster to have Mandy skip her clock phase and take another turn. So I'm just going to bring her right back down here because we need clues desperately. Actually, we kind of need anything at this point. But let's see what we can do with this. We don't have that many ways to cycle the adventure deck right now, so we do need to bear that in mind. Okay, we have to discard that. She didn't... Okay, she, oh, we also need a monster. So, hang on. I'm going to back that up because the monster might change things. The monster might... Yeah, the monster might change what I want to do here. So right now, Mandy still has the Roadster. Oh no. I believe this is the color out of space. Yes it is. Locks the yellow die, need a lore, and lose to sanity. Um, where do I want this? If I put it on the recruiting aid, I'm not touching it. I'm not be able to touch it no matter where I put it. So I think the only place I can really put it and have something that resembles a chance is if I put it on Vision of Demise. And do I still want to discard the Roadster and take another turn? Yes, I think I do. And I think I will bring her right back here. So we'll basically, we'll just restart the turn, essentially. Okay. We'll see if we have any better luck with this than we did when we first started. Let's see, three, six. I could change one to its highest investigation result, but I don't think that's worthwhile. We'll discard the terror and roll again. 
probably should have focused the three. There was a three in there, which I'll go ahead and focus that on Mandy. Actually, no, it's too late. All right, there's the lore. That one came out, and we are not finding any investigation to save our life. So if we had two threes, I can discard the prism to change the third die. Unfortunately, we had, it had to be two threes, and that's not enough investigation. So Mandy does fail. She had to discard a clue, except jokes on the card, because we don't have a clue to discard. But she will lose a sanity... This is going well. And the adventure will get discarded but not replaced. We'll flip Mandy over. And hey, look at that. The dice tower will be in a beautiful spot. So anyway, that will bring us to midnight and that will bring us back up top for the mythos phase. We are in deep at this point, and I don't think we, I honestly don't think we stand a chance of getting out of it at this point, but let's see what happens with this Mythos card. All right, Madness takes hold to bring forth horrors. Madness takes hold. Add one Doom token to the Doom track, unless all investigators have two or more sanity, and I think full, full, three, four, yep, okay, we're clear there. To bring forth horrors, the next time the clock strikes midnight, a monster appears. Of course, the game may be over by the next time we get to midnight. So, uh, that's going to take a minimum of six dice. Gross. All right, so Preston... Hmm. I think Preston's going to have to take one for the team here. And go unlock the yellow die. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to go unlock the yellow die. But I'm pretty sure we're heading for... Actually, it's Tony's turn. Never mind. Um, actually, he benefits from going after monsters. So let's send him over to Vision of Demise. And then we'll zoom in on Tony to see what he's doing. Since we've only got two adventures left, I think it makes shooting here so much easier. But, let's see what Tony's doing. He does get the red die because he's got to fight the color out of space. We need lore for days and two terror. Um, well, there's the two terror. We'll start that there. <clears throat> Okay, there's the wild result. Tony's also got to lose two sanity for that. But at least that will get the yellow die unlocked for other people's turns. Especially since I'm kind of figuring this... Especially since I'm figuring there's a good chance this will end up being his last turn of the game, but we'll find out soon enough. We need two lore, then. There we have it. All right, so Tony gets the trophy off of... So Tony will get both trophies, but he'll also get an Elder Sign and another spell. So we'll get the Elder Sign first, which will be our... Got stuck in there. But well, that's our fourth Elder Sign. Then he gets a spell he will find. Markings of Isis to let him lock a die. And then we get to go through flavor text. For three, I could feel it eating away at my mind. So that will bring Tony up to a trophy value of eight, 
which will actually turn into 10 once we look at visions of de vision of demise. And that awful vision, I fell and did not f rise again. We also get to, after resolving this adventure, look at the top three cards of the Mythos deck. Discard one and return the other two to the top of the deck in any order. Okay, so that brings Tony up to a trophy value of 10, which could buy an Elder Sign, but I don't think we're doing anything with that. So the next adventure we have is the Gift Shop, which is another ordered task for one. Three research, but a monster can go there. Then lore and three research. And then we get to look at the top three cards of the Mythos deck. So first up... <coughs> The stars align above an open door. So we would add one Doom Token to the Doom Track and place one additional adventure card below the others in play. After resolving it, don't replace it, which we're already not doing anyway, so that would just give us another adventure to potentially look at. A Deadly Gamble. Roll a green die on an investigation result, add another number of Doom Tokens to the Doom Track equal to the amount of investigation shown. Amid the stillness, there's no lingering effect for t today, and... Hope flees. Each blessed investigator rolls a green die. Each investigator who rolls a terror discards his blessing. Roll can't be affected in any way. Amid the stillness, there's no lingering effect for today. So I think the only one that even really does anything to us right now is the Deadly Gamble, which would add potentially add a lot of doom tr to the track. So I'll discard that, and then that doesn't do anything because nobody's blessed, and that one doesn't do anything. So we'll put we'll put the above an open door, and hopefully, and then hopefully, is put those back on top of the deck. Especially since I'm not completely sure the game's even going to last until another midnight, but we'll find out soon enough because we are at three o'clock, moving back up top to Preston. We are looking at extremely long odds to continue this game for much longer. So, I think we will bring Preston down to the gift shop while it's still somewhat manageable. I think we'll have to send Dexter over to try to recruit some aid. But let's zoom in on Preston and see what he's doing. We start off needing three, re three investigation. I tend to use investigation and research interchangeably. They basically mean the same thing. Bring the dice tower in just a little more. All right, there's our three to start with. Now we need lore and three investigation. Which we get. And Preston gets a unique item he will find. Silver key, which gives plus the red die. So that will move over to Preston with a trophy value of one once we look at the flavor text. I noticed that the shop was decorated with artifacts that could not be accommodated in the exhibits. The clerk seemed to read my mind as I studied them and assumed and assured me they were assured me they were all quite genuine. That font here is problematic. So that brings Preston up to a trophy value of four. He also gains a, a health back from retail therapy. And then his replacement adventure will be Hallway on Fire. Trophy value of two, another ordered task. Peril loses stamina. Peril loses stamina. Two unique items on pass. Fail lo failing loses you two health. That will do it for Preston. Let's move back up top for Dexter. Okay, so we're going to need somebody with a bit of stamina that can handle Hallway on Fire. I may, give the, I may plan on giving that to Preston next round. Tony is probably going to be trying to... Ugh. 
I think Tony's either going to have to go to recruiting aid or buy another elder sign, or we might be better off trying to buy some other stuff to help us out. But... <sighs> I think Dexter will actually... He would gain two spells if he bought one from the entrance, wouldn't he? Yeah, he would. So he'll actually spend four trophies to go down to two to buy two spells. So one because of the entrance, the other for a special effect. So Dexter will find... Green Flame of Zulka, uh, Tulska. You may cast this spell on any investigator's turn to lock a die. And... Cloud Memory. Discard to fully restore any investigator's sanity. Alright, then Clock Phase will bring us to 6 o'clock. To Mandy. And... She's not doing much with two trophies, is she? Um, what could she get at the entrance? A common item? Okay, wait. Dexter would be... Wait. It should have been... Okay, hold on. 3 o'clock to Tony. No, 3 o'clock would have been... Midnight would have been Tony. 3 to Preston. 6 to Dexter. So it should be 9 o'clock to Mandy. <coughs> the question is, what do I want Mandy to do here? Mmm... That terror is gonna be hard for her to deal with with only having three with only having three stamina left on hallway on fire. Um, I think she's actually just gonna heal up to full full stamina as well. So she's gonna spend her trophies to go to full stamina, and then that will bring us into the clock phase. And into a new mythos phase once I change my battery. We don't have any at midnight effects to go off here. And this is one of the cards we put on top from completing the last one of the last adventures Tony did. Right, add a Doom token to the Doom track and an adve additional adventure in play below the others. After resolving it, don't replace it. So Doom goes back up to four. And then our new adventure is Walking the Ledge for two. We need Skull, we need Peril, then Peril, then two Peril. Succeeding gets an Elder Sign, a Clue, and two Common Items. Failing loses two sanity and a stamina. Yikes. Um. Hmm. That actually might be decent Dexter territory, but. Well, we can use lock spells as well, but I think the plan was going to be. Actually, I might be able to bring Mandy down to try to deal with this one, but. She's going to need that prism of vision, like it's going out of style, and I think we'll have to use it there. So where do I want to send Tony, then? Um, once I stop jarring the camera, I can figure that out. Mm, place sanity to change a lore to a result of any choice, of my choice. So I think I will actually... Uh, where it... Four Elder Signs. I think Tony will actually... Ugh. Yeah, I think we'll have to bring him down to walking the ledge. We'll have to bite the bullet on that one. We'll move the dice tower into shot. And given the zoom, we should be able to just zoom right down here. Yep, that'll work out. Um... Right. I can toss the bullwhip in if I think it, if I end up needing the yellow die later. All right, there's our first skull. AKA peril.
There's another one. And now we need two peril, but a lore is also an acceptable result because Jeremiah Kirby can change them out. That'll work. We'll put a sanity on Jeremiah to change that to a peril and we'll complete that adventure. So that will give us our fifth elder sign. Another clue. And that'll bring us up to a tr and two common items. So Tony will find. A hunting rifle, after any investigator rolls dice, discard to defeat a monster. If it has a skull, a peril requirement also gain a clue. And... Research materials, after rolling, discard to change one die to its highest investigation result. Okay, clock phase will bring us... 3 o'clock. We move Tony up to the entrance and go through the flavor text on walking the ledge. <laughs> the vertigo left me dizzy and sweating. Each footstep was a, me was a heroic feat of will. That will bring him up to a trophy value of 12. And then we'll move back up top to see where Preston's going. Preston is going to walk through fire for, well, stuff. Anyway, we'll bring the dice tower back in shot. We'll tip the camera just slightly. Making some minor, act, minor uh, adjustments. And we should be able to get into a fairly easy turn. So this is an ordered task for Preston. There's a peril and he'll lose a stamina. We did have a couple terror in there, but we were able to clear. The terror happens if you're not able to complete if you're not able to complete a task. <clears throat> Peril and lose a stamina, which will leave that off because Preston's retail therapy is going to give him two unique items and give him a health back. So first up he finds. Blue Watcher of the Pyramid, after rolling, discard to change a die to a lore result, and Kopesh of the Abyss, discard after an investigator moves to an adventure with a monster to move that monster to any other adventure of your choice. Alright, and then this becomes a trophy value of two for Preston, which brings him up to... I believe it'll bring him up to four, it'll bring him up to six. And then flavor text here. The flames engulfed the walls and seemed to seemed to jump with an animal intelligence from the curtains to the exhibits. So Preston walked through fire for a Kopesh of the Abyss and the Blue Watcher of the Pyramid. All right, I won't yell at him too much for that, because that seemed like some pretty good stuff to walk through fire for. But Preston will find. Midnight Visitor. Oh, joy. Terror, lose one stamina. Two peril, then peril, terror, and lose a health. Succeeding gets you a common, a unique, and a clue. Failing loses two health and advances doom by one. I don't know who's set up for that one, but let's move back up. To, but clock phase will bring us to 6 o'clock and back up top to Dexter. Looking at our board right now, we are not in a very good situation. We only have two adventures left. One of them is going to take a bunch of symbols, a bunch of one in six chances, and the other is going to take all six dice. So I think we'll have to bring Dexter down to Midnight Visitor because he's got our re-rolls, so he's our best chance, I think, of clearing that one. So we'll bring Dexter... We'll zoom in on that.
This is probably where we're going to start burning clues like crazy. And or locking dice and or locking dice to make Mandy's try at recruiting aid a little easier. Delightful. Dexter loses his stamina right off the bat. He'll discard the one and focus the terror. Hmm. I guess the next question is, do I start locking now for Mandy's turn, or... The only thing I don't like about doing that is Mandy's Mandy's going to have the yellow die and a little bit of mitigation. So... Actually, I am so dumb. We're actually going to take the... We're actually going to spend a clue first. Before we bother with... Before we consider any of that, we're going to keep the terror, though. Clues are best used when you have more dice to re-roll. I should remember that. Right, peril, terror, and lose a stamina. That will work. Alright, I think I put the stamina on already that he was going to lose. Alright, so now I need two peril. Which that is exactly none, so I'll spend the other clue to try to get it. Now we lose another stamina. This is going to turn into a big problem for Dexter in a hurry. Because we've got nothing we can use there. We'll discard that. And then we'll secure a three to call friend, which Mandy will probably be using on her turn. We might also have to use Mandy's research. Which I think we is that reroll up to me reroll two dice. Um, let's. Ugh, this is so bad. Um, all right, we're gonna, so here's what we're gonna do. We are gonna prepare to make Mandy's turn a little bit easier. We'll discard that. We'll focus the three on. We'll lock the three on Flesh Ward, and then we are going to end up failing. So Dexter, oh, this is okay. This was a bad idea. So Dexter's actually going to end up... Ugh. Okay, this is... <sighs> Discard that. Um... <sighs> shoot. Alright, so we're actually ending up losing the... This is bad foresight on my part. So we actually lose two health. Dexter will end up devoured. That was dumb on my part. Which we put a doom up on the on the ancient one, but because we but because we have an investigator devoured, we actually put two doom up, and then that gets discarded. But Dexter will get a we will get an epitaph for Dexter. Let's see what Dexter let's see what Dexter and Ruff are leaving behind for us here. All right, so Dexter, at final rest, our friend's dying words led us to this hidden journal. Perhaps the blood right described therein can save us all. Each investigator gains one clue token and loses one stamina. All right, so... Unfortunately, the feeling I have here is that Dexter's last sacrifice will be in vain, but we'll find out soon enough there. Um, okay. 
That is Dexter's epitaph. And then that will bring us clock phase. Nine o'clock to Mandy. And I think she's just got a gamble here that we can actually clear this. Unfortunately, we have only one... Unfortunately, we are going to need the 18 Derringer because we do need the yellow die desperately. And we have the Prism of Vision to help out with um, mitigation. If we make it to midnight, we'll pull another Investigator. But if we don't, the game will be over and we'll lose. So we need three first. Okay, that'll work. Now we need six. I would prefer to get this on two dice. Oh, uh, I think I've got. I think I've got to use the prism of vision here, so I have the most dice available. So I'll go three, and I can use that to change. A die to its highest investigation result. So, that's a four. I think I'd rather use that on... I think I'd rather have that available for the roll. So, six. And now we need nine. So, if we don't clear it... <coughs> excuse me. So, if we don't clear this in two rolls, we are going to lose. Delightful. So we'll toss the... We don't have anything that we can use for re-rolls on other people's turns, do we? No. So we have to discard the peril, or the terror, and focus the three. If these aren't two threes, the game's over and we lose. Game's over, we lose. I'm not going to bother taking the penalty on Mandy, but the game is just over. So what'll happen is we take the sanity, we discard the adventure, and then just to confirm really quick, I'll move back up top to show that we have a completely empty board and we have lost the game. So I'm hoping that isn't an omen of what's to come in the rest of our Elder Torah playthrough. Fingers crossed on that. It sounds like we'll be back to it on May 28th. I'll put a link to Jester's channel in the description down below. But that will do it for this playthrough of Elder Sign. Wednesday we're headed back to the World War II Atlantic Ocean as we play, play Atlantic Chase. As for next week, we're going to play Terra Mystica. Thank you for watching the video. Please give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Be sure to turn on notifications so you get my content. Be well. Stay safe, take care of yourselves and your loved ones, and I'll be back with more videos in the future. Until then, take care everyone.